Hello, it's Nick, and today I want to show you how to create a responsive grid system for your UI design in Figma. The grid system is a structure of columns and lines that allow you to line up your design. To start creating a grid system, we need to add three frames – desktop, tablet and mobile. Select a desktop frame from a pre-built frames. For the tablet, I will choose the iPad mini. And for the mobile, I will choose the iPhone 15 Pro. Now, when we have all three frames, we can select the first one and start creating our grid system. Select the frame and in the Layout Grid section, click the plus icon to add a grid. Click on the Layout Grid settings and in the drop-down menu, choose Columns. A column grid is used to align UI elements horizontally. Each column in your grid system is exactly the same size. You can see that we use a stretch type of a grid. If we change the type to the center, our column will be centered and we will be able to change the width of the columns. But the problem with the centered grid is that it's not responsive, meaning that when we change the size of the frame, the columns stay the same. So let's change it back to the stretch, where the width of the columns is calculated automatically. Now it's time to define values for our grid system. And the first thing that we set is the number of columns. When it comes to the desktop, most of the time we use 12 column grid. That's 12 evenly spaced columns. The number is divisible by 4, so it gives us enough flexibility to create a design. The space between columns is called gutter. We will create an 8-point grid. So when it comes to the gutter, we need to choose the value divisible by 8. Let's set the gutter to 24. Lastly, we need to set margins. Margins are empty areas on the right and left sides of the grid system. You don't always want the grid to extend all the way to the edges of your viewport. So by setting the margin, you can dictate how much empty space you want to have for your container. When it comes to margin, the size of the margin is typically selected in accordance with the width of the container. Here is an example of the web page created with a 12 column grid. You can see that the content of the page belongs to the container. All projects are different and there are no strict rules that define the size of the container. I typically use 1152 points as the size of the container for the desktop. The margin is selected accordingly. In my case, it will be 144 points. How was this number calculated? The size of the viewport is 1440 minus the size of container, which is 1152 points divided by 2. That's our horizontal grid. Now let's create a vertical grid. Select the frame and in layout section, hit the plus button again. This time, change the settings to rows. For the horizontal grid, I will choose the type top, because I want the grid to start at the top of the screen. And the counts setting, I will type 1000. It will fill all our frame with the rows. The offset should be set to zero, since we want to start from the top. And since we use the 8 point grid, the height will be set to 8, and the gutter will be set to 8 too. Because we set the count to 1000, even when we change the height of the frame, we still see the rows. Once we create the grid, it can give us some benefits. For example, if we create a rectangle and place it in a frame, we will notice that it starts to snap in a grid. It snaps to the nearest row or column, so you can position your objects properly. Ok, we finished with the desktop grid, and it's time to create a grid for our tablet. I don't want to start from scratch, so I simply copy and paste the layout grid that we've created for the desktop in the tablet frame and modify the values for the horizontal grid. The vertical grid, grid with rows, will be the same for all three viewports. So we will need to modify only horizontal grid, the grid with columns. Click Layout Grid Settings and in a column set 8. For tablets, we typically use a smaller number of columns because we have less space to work with. The margin will be 32 and the gutter will be 16. Finally, let's copy and paste the layout grid from tablet to mobile. For mobile, we will decrease the number of columns to 4. I also set the margins to 16 and the gutter to 16. 16 is a minimal recommended margin size for the mobile because it guarantees a safe area around your content. Also, 16 is divisible by 8, which aligns with our goal of creating an 8-point grid. Because we set our grids to stretch, our grid are fully responsive. We can change the size of the frame and the grid will respond to the change. Our grid system is ready. Before wrapping up, I want to share the reference of the grid system I've created with you. The size of the container for the desktop is 1152 points, the tablet is 680 points, 
and the mobile is 360 points. Let me know what you think about responsive grid design in the comments. Thank you.